bunch of you guys want to make that league and you guys want to know the inside scoop as to how to get to that league and what the whole process is like. Well, I've answered your prayers here. I'm going to give you guys the information that you want. The number one spot where NA teams scout out of and draft players out of, it doesn't come as much surprise, but it is the... What's going on guys? This is Brayden from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we'll be talking about where the NAHL scouts their players from based on the past draft here in 2023 in June. So it's no surprise the NAHL is one of the best junior leagues that players can go to if they want to play NCAA hockey in the future. I know that's why a bunch of you guys want to make that league and you guys want to know the inside scoop as to how to get to that league and what the whole process is like. Well I've answered your prayers here. I'm going to give you guys the information that you want. Basically what we're going to do in this video is outline the places that the NAHL teams scout the most from. So the different leagues that you guys can go to, to, to have, to give yourself the best chance of being seen by these NA coaches and making an NA team one day, hopefully, and then potentially making an NCAA program. So hopefully this video brings a lot of value to you guys. I'm going to dive right into the list after I say to absolutely destroy that like button. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. So you never miss another video moving forward. All right, with that spiel out of the way, let's dive right into the list. Here. All right, so the number one spot where any teams scout out of and draft players out of, it doesn't come as much surprise, but it is the Canadian Junior Leagues. And a lot of you US guys are probably going to be cursing, you know, the, the world and all that stuff and telling me I know nothing about hockey. I can already see the keyboard warriors hyping as they are, but it is the reality. It's by far the most. And yes, it's a combination of leagues, so I guess that's a little bit unfair. But overall, there was 76 players drafted out of a Canadian Junior League from the year before. So that means that the the NA teams really value these uh, Canadian junior hockey players. I think for, for the reason that there's really good players in, in Canadian junior and it's guys that have played junior that have the experience. So it makes a lot of sense that their number one scouting is from leagues like let's say the AJ, the SJ, the MJ, the CC, OJ. All these leagues are very solid leagues and uh, the NA guys get players from there. It makes a lot of sense for me that these guys are number one. All right, now number two on our list here is 18U AAA. And again, this makes a lot of sense. I, I don't know if it's uh, US or Canadian, like we couldn't get this data from the NA, but I would say it's probably mainly US. There might be a few Canadian players in there, but I'd say it's mainly US. It makes a lot of sense. There was 35 drafted players and a lot of guys that play AAA hockey in 18U move on to the NA the following year, especially the guys that did really well at 18U. Usually the guys that do okay to not so well, they go to leagues like the EHL and all that stuff. But overall, it's pretty reassuring that if you're playing 18U and you're doing well, you have a good chance of not only getting drafted, but making the team. So really cool for you guys to know here moving forward. Forward. All right, so moving on to number three here, and this comes to my surprise, actually. I've been proven wrong in the past before, and I guess I get proven wrong here, but the NA3HL is number three. Now, it does come to a bit of a surprise, not so much because I know they're affiliated with the NA, and the top players are the ones that usually get drafted, but I didn't think it'd be number three on our list, and it comes to 27 players that got drafted from the NA3. I don't know how many made the team, but honestly, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty stellar to see, so I might start bringing the NA3 up in my roster a, a little little bit more but again it's it's strictly NA draft so there is a bias there where they're picking from their own okay but again you want to use that to your advantage it might be an advantage to go to an NA3 NA team to get potentially drafted to an NA team the following year so something to, to consider it's nothing I really considered too strongly before but it opens my eyes a little bit and it might affect my rankings next year when, when it comes to leagues to play and stably hockey all right now number four on our list here just a little bit below the NA3 and that's other tier three junior so I'm assuming they're lumping the USPHL premier and the EHL together and they had 25 drafted players. Now, it's unfortunate that they're lumping them together because I really want to see league by league, you know, which guys did get drafted more. I mean, if I really took the time to dive into the data, I could have probably found it, but it would have taken way too long. Honestly, we're just going to lump the other tier threes together here. So not so much below the NA3, but if there's several leagues lumped together in here, that means the NA3 on its own has more NAHL drafted guys than the other tier three junior leagues. So something to consider, but honestly, it's, uh, it's cool to see anyways that the NA3 had so many drafted guys, but just know that if you go to another tier three junior league, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You're not going to make the NA. It is possible if you do well, you can get drafted and you can make the team. It's just a little bit harder. All right. So moving on to number five on our list here, and that is European junior. And these guys aren't too far below either. There's about 21 guys that got drafted to the NA. I would say if you're getting drafted to the NA and you're a European junior player, chances are you have a good chance of making the team because they only use those drafts and, and take players that they think are going to be really valuable because of the 
limited import positions. In that case, if, if you're in that position, the team's probably very interested in you. But again, I didn't realize they drafted so many European players. This is another one that kind of shocked me a little bit. It's cool for you guys in Europe knowing that there is, you know, a solid way to come to the States in le good leagues like the NAHL. If you're a good hockey player, you put up good numbers over there in a good league, there is a way to come. So it was really cool to see the, the stats here with the European junior. All right, now number six on our list here is 16U AAA. There is one 15U AAA person that got drafted. So I'm going to lump them in with the 16U, probably because these guys were like, this guy was probably an incredible player that got drafted at the 15U level. But 16U, nice to see there was 20 picks overall. So just one below the European junior. I'd say these guys that are getting drafted out of 16U are probably exceptional hockey players. They're probably very good. Probably guys that get drafted to the USHL as well. I would say, yeah, that it's probably the, the really good players. And if you get drafted out of 16U, you have a very bright future ahead if you keep going on the right path. So it's uh, it's nice to see that if you do get drafted, it's it's really it's really cool to see for, for those players. Right below 16U at number seven is prep school with 19 draft picks overall. So just one below, honestly, prep school too. If you're doing well in prep school, if you're at a good program, similar to 16U or 18U, if you do well there, chances are you might get some NA looks and you might get drafted and make the team moving forward. So prep school, definitely, honestly, it's one of my favorite places to, to play out of, not only for the, the junior exposure, but for the college exposure as well. If you're in one of the top prep schools, you're in a good spot. All right, now moving on to number eight on our list here, and that is high school with 15 picks in the NA this past June. Now, the one caveat here I have with high school is that they're not all created equal, and I'm willing to bet, I, we didn't dive into this, but I'm willing to bet that most of these picks are from Minnesota high school because Minnesota high school is incredibly strong. There's so many D1 picks that come out of there. It's very, very good hockey, and uh, I would say most of these picks are coming out of there. There might be the odd Massachusetts high school kid and all that stuff, but overall, high school's not really that strong compared to other prep schools and uh, AAA programs. I would say the only black swan in this whole event, the only like oddball is the Minnesota high school whole league and conference. It's it's so, so strong that it makes sense that most of these kids would be coming out of there. So number nine on our list here is the USHL with 12 picks overall. Now, this one kind of confused me at first. I'm like, okay, why are they picking from guys that are already in a higher league? There's a couple of rationales I have behind this. Maybe it's players that got cut and they're picking them for the following year. Or maybe it's players that they think that are going to get cut, that they're drafting their rights, you know, and that they're hoping they get cut so they can hold on to them. I think that's the rationale behind it. I don't know exactly why they go for it. And similar to our 10th pick here, which actually I'll dive right into it right now, is the NAHL with eight picks overall. I think it's similar things. Maybe the rights get released and they, they draft out of there, you know, but it's a little bit more complicated. But I, I think that's that's what's going on here, that they draft players that they think are going to get cut or that got cut, released, anything like that, and that they're holding on to their rights. So I could see that happening. But again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit gray area, but just know that it's it's more towards the bottom of the list for a reason. It's not the norm that, that this happens. It's more the other teams on top and the other leagues on top that you want to focus on. Now, before we do a recap of the list here, there's one interesting fact that I want to show you guys, and that is the percentage of forwards compared to defensemen compared to goalies that got drafted, okay? So overall, Fords was at a whopping 62%. 62% of the players that got drafted were Fords, which is crazy to think about. Yes, there's more Ford spots to fill, but it was really, really skewed in that direction. And then 28% was defensemen, and then 10% was goalies. So again, I wanna stress this fact that yes, it makes sense because of the breakdown of the roster, but for goalies especially, it's very, very difficult because of the limited spots to make the NHL. So you really have to be on your game, okay? When you go to these camps, when you get seen, any game that you play with your team in the regular season, make sure you're on your game, make sure the mindset's right, the, the development's right, all that stuff. That goes for every other player too, because the NA is not an easy league to make, but especially for goalies, guys, really important that you show up your best every single game because it's that much harder to make it. All right, a lot of info thrown at you guys. Let's do a quick recap of the top 10 leagues that the NAHL recruits out of based on the June 2023 draft. Number one, it's the Canadian Junior Leagues with 76 draft picks. Number two, it's U18 AAA with 35 draft picks. Number three is the NA3HL with 27 draft picks. Number four, it's other tier three junior leagues with 25 draft picks. Number five, it's European Junior Leagues with 21 draft picks. Number six is 16U AAA with 20 draft picks. Number seven, it's prep school with 19 draft picks. Number eight is high school, mainly Minnesota high school probably with 15 draft picks. Number nine is the USHL with 12 draft picks. And then number 10 is the NAHL with eight 
draft picks. And that is a wrap, my friends. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this video here. And you know which leagues to go to to get seen, drafted, and picked by future NAHL teams here moving forward. If you did like this video, and if you haven't already, consider hitting that like button. It really goes a long way for the algorithm here. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video here moving forward. If you have anything whatsoever, if you disagree with this list, if you don't like it whatsoever, and if you really loved it, feel free to comment down below or shoot us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, love that you guys are watching. Thank you so much and we'll catch you in that next one.